Hi everyone, Cassie here from Primrose Dawn, and today I wanted to share with you a pattern hack for the Desiree bra. This is to create cut and sew foam cups with a rolled edge. Let's take a look at the details. So what do I mean by a rolled edge? Well, there is no trim along the neckline. The cover just rolls over to the inside and has a nice clean finish. Now in the pattern, the foam cup option is finished with fold over elastic. So in order to do the rolled edge, we have to make just a few simple pattern adjustments. Let's begin with the foam pieces. Make sure that you have the ones that say just foam. Now, when I first designed this pattern, I wanted to do a rolled edge along the neckline of the cup, but it just didn't work with the strap attachment. As you can see, if you were to put these pieces together, you get this little bit of a corner here. And whenever I would bring the cover to the front, it would get a lot of bunching in here. And I didn't want to change the style of the strap attachment just for the foam cup. So I decided in the pattern to finish the neckline edge with fold over elastic and make this rolled edge kind of a, a bonus hack. So all we need to do for the, uh, the foam cup is remove this strap attachment so that when you sew it, instead of sewing the strap to the right side of the cup, you know, with a seam here, you'll be placing the raw edge of the strap behind the cup and adding a bar tack to attach it. So we're just gonna be attaching the strap in a different method. So all we need to do is just cut off this seam allowance here for the strap attachment. Okay, now we'll put this back. You'll see that once the foam cup is assembled, we have a nice straight edge. Okay, we'll put those to the side. And now, I will need the cover pieces. Okay, here are my cover pieces and I'm going to get some paper because this is going to get a little more complicated than just the foam pieces were. Okay, so as you saw along the neckline edge, the rolled edge needs seam allowance along the neckline. Now these are the cover pieces. And currently there is no seam allowance along the neckline of the inner cup. And we just have the quarter inch for the strap attachment here. So let me get this lower down on my paper and I'm going to tape it down. Okay, I'll use my red pen so you can see. Now we have a quarter inch rolled edge. So that's gonna be a quarter inch on the inside um, sewn down and then a quarter inch to turn it. So that means I need to add half an inch, which would also be uh, 12 millimeters if you do metric along that edge. So I'm using my ruler here to add half an inch okay. and just continue these lines. And if you want to add the notch in, just go straight up and add that notch. Now, along the upper outer cup, where the strap attachment is, we already have a quarter inch, so we'll just need to add another quarter inch on top of that. So I'll tape down my pieces here and just add another quarter inch, also six millimeters if you do metric, and just continue those lines. That's it for the pattern changes. So cut out your new pieces and then we'll get to sewing. I have constructed my foam cup and the cover according to the directions in the pattern, but how we put them together is going to be a little different for our rolled edge. These are both the right sides of this cup. And to put it together, we're going to put the right side of the cover towards the wrong side of the foam cup. Now this is where I have my markings, so I know that's the wrong side. And I'm going to align these notches that are at the neckline. And I'm going to put a pin there. I like to use thin satin pins uh, when I'm working with lingerie fabrics just because they seem to work better with these very um, finely knitted fabrics. Now when you pin along the neck edge, it's probably, the cover should extend slightly 
at each end, and that's on purpose. You want extra fabric to make sure that there's enough to go around and over all the edges of this foam cup. So go ahead and add a few more pins in. I only like to add a few at the beginning and the end. And you're going to sew a quarter inch seam along here, just a regular straight stitch. Now I've already done that on the other cup. And you can see it here. And before you do the next step, just test it to make sure that it's going to work. So bring the cover around into the front. And if you gently stretch the cover, it should be able to go around all the edges of the foam cup. So it looks okay. You can see I would have to pin and smooth and make sure everything looks okay. We're just testing it right now. But as you can see, there's a lot of bulk right here. Here's our rolled edge. And it's quite thick. And if you were to just wear the bra like this, you you would get a ridge underneath uh, whatever shirt you were wearing. So we want to compress this down. And we also want to stabilize this edge. If you're bigger than probably a C cup, you really want to stabilize this because some foam can stretch. So how do you do that? You have a couple options. Um, some bra kits come with twill tape. This is a roll of twill tape that I bought. And it's just a quarter inch twill tape, um, very rigid. It's cotton. Um, so you can use that and you would just sew this within that quarter inch seam allowance. So you wouldn't want to use anything that is bigger than a quarter inch. So you would sew it on just like that. Um, and another option is a Trico stay tape. Now I like to sew with knits, um, knit t-shirts and things. And this is something you would add into the shoulders. This is a stabilized Trico, the same sort of fabric that sheer cup lining is. And this is about half an inch wide. So you could take a piece of this, sew it to the seam, uh, aligning it with the stitching, add an, another line of stitching, and then just trim down the extra. It's not going to ravel. And after you've stabilized the seam somehow, you'll want to sew in a dense zigzag stitch, probably the width of the seam allowance. And that will just crush these layers together to make it nice and smooth and a much narrower profile. So I will go do that and come back. Okay, I am back. I have sewn some of that uh, Trico tape and trimmed it along the edge and added my zigzag. I used about the widest zigzag my machine would do and it just about covered all the seam allowance. So uh, if your, zig your widest zigzag isn't wide enough to go over the whole seam allowance, it's more important to get it closest to this cut edge here. So I hope you can see just how, how much flatter that has gotten than it was before. So now we're going to turn the cover out to the right side. And we're going to pull it down and just start smoothing it out. And make sure that it covers the foam cup along all the edges. And there's our nice rolled edge. Now you don't want to pull it so tight that the foam cup underneath starts to collapse. We don't want that. So you can start maybe sort of in the center of the cup here. And once you get it all covered and it looks nice and smooth, but not pulling too much, you can start adding some pins and go all the way around pinning the cover around the edge of the cup. The only bad part about these pins is that sometimes they get stuck together. Okay, that looks good. And there's our nice rolled edge. And the next thing I will do is baste around these raw edges to connect the cover and the cup. 
and then I will trim away the excess and continue on with my pattern. I'm ready to attach my straps now. As you can see, the back looks a little bit different than what's in the pattern, and that is another pattern hack that I will have on a different video. And I wanted to show you that you have two different options for attaching the strap. Now, obviously, we have removed the strap attachment at the front, but you can still put the ring or the end of the strap up at the front. So what I've done is at each end, I have left a little bit of extra of the fold-over elastic. So if you want to attach the ring at the front, you can just thread the elastic through, fold it back, and sew that down. But if you want to have the cut end, the strap at the front, you'll fold back the fold over elastic and put the end of the strap behind and sew that down with the bar tack or some zigzag stitch. I've already done that on this side and I did two rows of narrow stitching and I did, I thought I would be okay with one row of very narrow stitching, trying to make like a bar tack, but I decided that wasn't strong enough. So I added another row below it. But if I were to do this again, which I will do on the other side, I think I'll just do one row of a more medium zigzag stitch. And obviously I had to choose between the purple or the white and I went with the white thinking that more of it would be on the fabric side and then it would blend in a little bit more. So you have to decide which you want at the front, the ring or the end of the strap.